Hi, I'm Linda Farrell. Bill Daniels, Professor of Business Ethics, uh, working on the Daniels Fund Ethics Initiative here at the University of New Mexico. Hi, I'm O.C. Farrell, uh, Bill Daniels, Professor of Business Ethics, University of New Mexico. And uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about uh, fantasy investing from an ethical perspective. And the fantasy ethical investing came about because we thought with fantasy sports being so popular among so many groups, that you don't necessarily have to have actual real dollars for investment for students to make determinations as to why they selected one company that's a good ethical company over another company and why they think that the ethics relates to the bottom line. So the premise for this project is you can give people a fantasy million dollars in their team, ask them to research and defend why certain companies represent ethical and to some extent a little bit of a social responsibility event because oftentimes those two perspectives are blended, and how that impacts the bottom line. So the student teams made decisions, selected companies, on a particular date everybody bought their stocks, and then on a particular date they sold their stocks. And then they were asked to present and defend why the stocks that they uh, performed well, didn't perform well, might have performed better longer term, and so on. It made for very compelling presentations in OC's graduate uh, marketing ethics course. And an interesting thing occurred because I've been told that often students are used to investment clubs where they get more excited if they have real money, but I did not find any uh, concerns at all the fact that we didn't have real money. We gave each team a million dollars and asked them to spread that over six or seven different selections. It worked out great. and. The important thing about a class project is they got a little excitement because they had uh, six full weeks to track the performance of the companies. And we had strange things happen to some of the companies. As a matter of fact, one of the ethical companies was in another country, and it was actually taken over by the government, and uh, the stock price went way down. And so the students began to learn that, at least in the stock market, even if you uh, have a highly ethical company, uh, there are still many environmental and outside risk factors that you have to take into account. And we were very lucky in this first run in that the, uh, the, the stock market closed all very close to what it was when we first started. But we did have some teams that made a significant gain and other teams that had a loss. But the most important thing about this project, they had to vet each company in terms of its ethical culture, ethical integrity, they had to do research to see if they had ethical problems. And this was the learning component. So overall, I think that it was an incredible experience. The students enjoyed it. It's kind of game, a game type of thing. They have fun. And they get to apply some of the basic principles and values of what should be an ethical company in making their stock selections. Overall, looking at the historical uh, performance, the students really thought it was a great project. So we have some of the people involved in this particular project, including, first of all, we had a judge, uh, Tim Butler, and he works for as a vice president of wealth management with Baird, and we're going to hear from him. He's going to talk uh, about uh, his perspective on this fantasy ethical investing, and then we'll hear from the two students, uh, Drew and Deslin, who were the best performers in the class. Hi, this is O.C. Farrell, Bill Daniels, Professor of Marketing, the Anderson School of Management, University of New Mexico. And today we have Tim Butler with us. He's with R.W. Barrett. He's a portfolio manager. And he had, before R.W. Barrett, he had 18 years of experience with Schwab as a portfolio manager. And today we're going to ask him a question, a very simple question. He's just observed a fantasy ethical investing project uh, in my marketing class. And we want to ask him what he thinks the students are getting out of this particular project. Okay. Dr. Farrell, to answer your question, um, in attending the class, I was very impressed with the, with the class. And I think that it's very important that the students are able to distinguish what ethics are versus brand versus capital cost. And sometimes you're not getting a return on your investment immediately to be ethical, but then over time you're getting that type of return. And I think they're doing a wonderful job of distinguishing that. And I think it's a great coursework for them to go through. And I think that from what I can see, that the students are 
really engaging in that and, and learning about, a lot about the brand and how that ties into the ethical part of the company. <laughs> Tim, thank you. Uh, I just wonder what you think about what the students are learning. Obviously, this is not real money and it's kind of a fantasy project, but what kind of things do you think they take away as they take on responsibilities as managers themselves from uh, vetting these companies from an ethical perspective? Well, Dr. Farrell, I think that despite the fact that they may not have actual capital of their own invested in it in dollars and cents, I think that um, they do have a lot of their own time invested in it. And it's very competitive in that when I was in the coursework there in the class, each person brought up how their portfolio had done. And also, they seem to be competitively engaged. And I think that sometimes money, um, actual dollars, or in this case, you know, um, not actual dollars, that th those, you know, it still creates a competitive environment regardless. And, and I think the students are getting a lot from that. I, mean, I, th I don't think they have to have actual dollars invested of their own dollars or the university dollars. I think that um, theoretical funds are, are working just fine. In this yeah, um, I think that from a managerial standpoint that they're getting a lot from it in that, you know, the assumption is, is that each of these MBA students are going to be running some type of a brand or they're going to be working their way up into a higher level part of the corporation. And I think that, you know, the trends are in the industry right now that, you know, ethics are very important. I think that a knowledge of ethical behavior in a company will really help them in job interviews and also enable them to be able to kind of lay the foundation going forward within their company. Okay, we have Deslin, Chakan, and Drew Wagner with us, and they're going to tell you a little bit about their perspectives of being in an MBA class where we did the Fantasy Ethical Investing Project, and they participated in selecting a portfolio of ethical companies based on uh, criteria that were set up in terms of code of ethics, ethics programs, how they treat their employees, etc. And uh, I want to ask... Uh, Deslin and Drew, if they could tell us what they think they got out of this particular project. So as MBA students going through the process of this assignment, um, I found it interesting to do the research first off. Um, it's hard to go to find all anything you would want to invest in, um, but, but based on ethical uh, criteria. So we went through the world's most ethical, ethical list 2010, 2011, 2012, um, you know, who was on there every year, two of those years. And then, you know, picking a lot, picking like 15, 18, and then going through each one and finding what's interesting about them, what makes them stand out. Because to this class, um, what I've enjoyed the most is that what ethics does is, is your choice to go above and beyond uh, for your company or your stakeholders. And, um, and so it's cool to see to go beyond and look not only at their governance, but their their CSR, how they treat their employees, how they treat every stakeholder. And that's how we picked ours. And then to, to periodically check up on it every two weeks. What are they doing? Does that have anything to do with ethics? Does it have to do because they, they sold some land in Mexico and now their stock price is higher? So, you know, it was tough to tell because it's a short period, but it was still interesting um, just finding different things. Like one of our companies did really well in this quarter because their organic um, supply line went up. And uh, that all has to do with, you know, sustainability initiatives and going green. Uh, it also has to do with marketing, but it's cool just to see those little things that we have been studying and how they can affect us. Well, for me, I can honestly say that I've never really looked into investing into a company at this point in my life. And so this kind of forced me to take those steps to figure out how to allocate different funds to investing into a company and I think that when people do choose to invest into a company I don't know that they necessarily look at things such as ethics and participation in the community and sustainability and things like that and for this specific project obviously we that was one factor that we definitely have to consider and for me I really got a sense of what different companies are doing ones that you know are very profitable but not necessarily active as far as CSR is concerned as far as ethics is concerned, they may have a compliance program, but they don't necessarily um, display it as much as they could. And so I think I really learned a lot about the different, some of the big businesses that we hear about every day, that we shop with every day, about what some of the good things that they do. And I think that this is something that others should consider when investing into a company. Um, the group that I was in specifically 
we kind of went back and forth about whether we should invest based on their ethics, ethical standing more or more on their financial promises or financial future. And it kind of, our biggest company that made us the most money, I mean, their ethics list and their sustainability list is just off the Starbucks. charts. Starbucks. Is Starbucks, nice. yes. They, I mean, they've done so much. It's no secret that their commitment to stakeholder uh, relationships has really just increased their their business and their their popularity and their reputation and I think that that was something that directed why we were doing this project why you should absolutely invest um, in somebody that has a positive image and does well as far as CSR is concerned and for us trying to be uh, managers future managers especially in marketing it goes beyond investing because I don't have a million dollars to invest uh, per se but I do, I do, it's do interesting to see companies and how I do, would like to work for, you know, Fortune 500 company. And like, what do they do? They have their, you know, director of ethics and they have codes of conduct. And then, you know, some of the bigger ones will put out, um, you know, their, you know, their codes and their specific things, goals they want to want to cut down water usage and transportation by 40% by 2016, things like that. And how important that is to each company. And all those companies doing well. Ours, what's important to the company um, equating to profit? So that's what I found interesting. You know, one of the questions that came up during this whole process was, "We is ethics really worth um, companies' time?" And I think that absolutely. I think it's not it, just because it doesn't pay off right away. It's also it's about being proactive. It's about risk management. It's about just ensuring that your company has something to fall back on if a if a problem arises and I think that's definitely important to an investor I mean okay they don't want to invest money into someone that could potentially fall off the grid I mean just because they're making a lot of money doesn't mean that in one day something can't change and I think that's something that really stood out throughout this process and that's a student's interpretation of our fantasy investing exercise I'd like to thank uh, Tim, Drew, and Deslin for giving us their insights on fantasy ethical investing and I hope that if you're interested in this project, you feel free to contact us, and our contact information is coming up.